retired from USF and has worked as a goldfish wrangler. We need to know more about that. Yeah, Disneyland orange skater and Australian book tour organizer. Her work has appeared in Quiet Lightning, Drunken Boat, Meat Magazine, The Colleges, Poet as Radio, and other journals. She blogs about the unseen at www.invisibleadventure.com. Check out her website. Please welcome Candy Shu. for coming and to Jeff and Autumn for organizing in this great space. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm a poet, but I also write some other things, and this is an essay called In the Life of Second Chances. Keeping my left hand on the steering wheel, I reached my right hand behind the driver's seat and groped around until I could feel my daughter Jillian's leg. Wake up, Gigi, I said, shaking it as hard as I could. Wake up, Mama's here, Mama's right here. My voice sounded surprisingly steady, as if it was coming from somewhere far beyond my own voice box. Twelve hours ago, my husband Peter and I were killed to have a peacefully sleeping child, but now it has occurred to me that if Jillian was silent, she must be dying. If she was crying, at least I knew she was still trying to breathe. Sometimes it seemed like my life consisted almost entirely of second chances, each day a chance to correct the dopey mistakes of the day before. Did I burn the chicken last night? I'll make pasta tonight. Did I forget to call my mother? She'll harass me for it, but she'll st still talk to me today. Did I make it to the grocery store for milk and apples, email the volunteers for the school lunch program, take the dog for a run? All the day's events, discreet in themselves, tended to blend together over the course of the week. Even when I worked for a publishing house, free children, deadlines came and went, with what became the usual bluster, people screaming into phones and in conference rooms about incompetent assistants and impossible production schedules, missed FedEx pickups and trade show shipments, everything to be blown over and forgotten until the next absolute emergency, must have, bike messenger layout, catalog photo, contract, or manuscript. I left the 9 a.m., 8 p.m. grind to have my first child, a girl born in August 1995, the year of the pig. Allie made parenting seem easy with her precocious self-possession and early language acquisition. She was hand-signing the words for more popcorn, please, before she could speak. And once she could speak, she behaved more like a small adult than an actual child. <laughs> Peter and I decided that the signs looked good for child number two. Jillian insisted on being born in the wee morning hours of Halloween, instead of during Thanksgiving vacation, her official due date. Nurses were already wandering around the hospital corridors in their costumes. So I wasn't hallucinating when I saw a raggedy Ann and a tie-dyed hippie passing by my room as I tried to ride out a wave of crowning contractions that doubled me over and had me gasping in a very un like way. <laughs> the baby came out red-faced and fighting mad. Maybe there were ill wings or ghosts and witches in the air. Whatever it was, Jillian chomped down so hard on the delivering doctor's finger that he yelled, Ow! She bit me! in a loudly shocked voice. How could a newborn gum a full-grown man so hard? She didn't even have any teeth. And what was the doctor doing with his finger in my daughter's mouth? Anyway? <laughs> My sister-in-law, the French astrologer, informed us that in addition to being a Halloween witch, Jillian was also a double Scorpio, a two-fold whammy fire sign. And my parents, as proud Chinese grandparents, were ecstatic that Jillian was not only born in the year 2000, the year of the dragon, she was born in the year of the golden dragon. Uh, a very auspicious and special event that only occurred once every 144 years. Apparently, we had hit a trifecta of good cultural omens. <laughs> Whatever the reasons, the Greek stars or the Chinese ones, in her first hours in this new world, 
Jillian would stop breathing, turn blue, and be rushed into the newborn intensive care unit where the doctors festooned her with electronics that monitored her, her heart rate, her temperature, and her blood oxygen levels. Allie, coming in to meet the newest family member, took one look at all the tubes and wires coming out of her younger sister's head and hands and promptly dubbed her the octopus baby. This made the NICU nurses laugh and laugh. At a whopping five pounds, six ounces, Jillian was full term in their eyes. They had much creamier babies to worry about. My mother had always said that bad luck comes in threes, but usually she brought this up only after seeing some old movie star had died on TV, so I thought the superstition just applied to celebrities. Jillian was colicky, sure, but who wouldn't be after a bumpy beginning? Okay, so her cry was as piercing as a baby pterodactyls, and it made my husband want to bolt to the other side of the house, but that's what earplugs were made for, right? Um, yes, she liked being up at 2 a.m. instead of 10 a.m., which was highly inconvenient. And sometimes she scared the bejesus out of me at night when I would go into her room to find her sitting in her crib, giving me this creepy cabbage patch baby stare, all bald head and like huge, dark, and blinking eyes. Look, my sister once crowed, taking a ghastly picture of Jillian sitting E.T. like amid a sofa full of hairless, cast-off dolls that even my nieces refuse to play with anymore. Jillian has found her people. After two months of two child chasing, no sleeping schedule, I found myself in a constant and kind of crazy state of hypervigilism, ready to jump at the slightest provocation but also a yearning to flee each time I heard Jillian's caterwauling cry ran the night. Time started to blur, and at some crucial point, I must have gone into survival mode. You know, yoga with a capital fucking Y. <laughs> so that meant when I wasn't feeding Jillian or changing her or putting her down for a nap or getting her up for a nap or washing clothes or folding clothes or making food or cleaning up food, I was throwing myself onto my purple st sticky mat and flinging my legs up the wall into like a desperate Viparita Karani. Sometimes my husband would come home to find me in child's pose, hugging my yoga bolster like a buoy bobbing in the ocean, or pretending to be dead in Shavasana. <laughs> I have a picture from this period of our of time of me lying on my back uh, with Jillian lying on my chest, our arms splayed out from our sides, the two of us kind of in this twinned, nested crucifixion pose, um, both of us resting for like a brief, blessed moment. So this was my thought process, if you could call what I was doing thinking at that time. Maybe if I do enough yoga in between everything else, I'll be able to make it another day. And then my next thought came, and then I'll have to do it all over again. And again, and again, and again. Oh my God. Of course, things got better. You know, time goes on, things change. And that's what I would repeat to myself swinging my legs up into a shoulder stand and adjusting the folded blankets beneath the small of my neck. Our lives had been turned upside down, and the only response I had was to get upside down too, uh, hoping to find a better or at least survivable way of seeing it. So at 14 months old, Jillian was starting to eat some solid food, and so one day I gave her a bit of scrambled egg, which she ate without hesitation, along with pureed rice and squash, and then we headed to the grocery store with Jillian riding her little toddler wishbone trike and I was steering her from behind while her little legs pumped the pedals. Coming back with our dinner fixings, she began to turn all red and puffy around the eyes and mouth and she started to cough like she had something caught in her throat. And I gave her a drink of water, but by the time we had walked the three blocks to our home, she was crying and scratching at her still ballooning face and neck, and she was wheezing like this like broken thing. Dr. Fong listened to my rapid recitation of my daughter's symptoms over the phone and didn't hesitate. 
How far away are you, she asked. About 15 minutes, I answered, attempting to sound like a competent, caring mother, you know, not one who would be so stupid as to poison her own kid. <laughs> 15 minutes was a highly optimistic estimate. I could get to the doctor's office in 15 minutes on a very good day with the traffic god smiling down upon me, removing all obstacles from my way. And this was not turning out to be a good day. You had better bring her here right away, Dr. Fong pronounced. It will be faster than calling an ambulance. This wasn't about Jillian's pterodactyl pride. It wasn't about a night of silly, interrupted sleep. It wasn't about astrological predictions, Chinese or otherwise. This was a real fucking emergency. Allie was at school and Peter was at work and I was the only person my daughter had, you know, more woe to her. Jillian continued to cry and cough and choke and claw at her face as I thrust her into her car seat and strapped her down. I backed the station wagon out of our too tight San Francisco garage, um, fighting against the adrenaline surging through me in order to check the car's multiple blind spots. I was running on two tracks that I hadn't realized existed. One part of me knew for a fact that Jillian was in the process of dying, while the other part of me was traversing the busy, well-worn path to her pediatrician's office across town. Weren't movie comedies filled with expectant fathers who tore up the streets and wreaked road havoc getting their laboring wives to the hospital? You know, didn't firemen pull out all the stops getting bleeding passengers to the emergency room? Wasn't I supposed to be racing to save my daughter's life? You know, certainly no one would blame me for driving like a bat out of hell under the circumstances. So why was I stopping at every red light and every stop sign? Why was I obeying all the traffic lights, even to the point of slowing down on the yellows instead of speeding through them? I signaled my turns and my lane changes, and I kept an eye on the posted speed limits. You know, I couldn't blame it myself. You know, I was like, what the hell am I doing? Suddenly, the idea of the electrons clicked into my head. I thought about how electrons sometimes behave like particles, and sometimes they behave like waves. The only difference was when you happened to be looking at them. So either way, though, the particle or the wave, they were always still electrons. Meanwhile, pedestrians jaywalked across the street. A battered white car made an illegal U-turn in front of me. The El Muni let passengers off on Terrabelle, and I stopped to watch the people cross safely to the other side. Everyone was going about their daily business, living, living their lives. Nothing out of the ordinary was happening to them. Or maybe something crazy was going on with all of them, and none of us would ever know it. Who could tell anything just you know, about anybody just by looking at them? Behind me, I heard Jillian emit a tiny chirp, and I took a deep inhale, and I kept on driving. I jostled her leg. I talked to her. I kept my eyes on the road and my hand on the wheel. Then we were in front of the doctor's office. I slid my car into an open parking spot. The tacky plastic parking angel taped to my dashboard actually worked. It's a long bit of, you know, kitschy magic. This one time, it actually worked. And I seized Jillian from the back seat and ran with her up the stairs, where the doctor whipped her from my arms, weighed her, gave her back to me, and shot her with two syringes, one filled with Benadryl and another with epinephrine. Jillian yowled as the first needle and then the second one sank into her skinny little arm. I dropped into a hard chair, my daughter on my lap. People were fluttering around us saying things, but I couldn't quite get myself to understand. It had taken us 10 minutes to get there. I had not killed anyone along the way. We were going to get another, another, another chance, and I knew we were going to need them all.